Good morning. Welcome back to our Chronological Bible Reading. I'm Ray Reynolds, the minister of the Seminole Church of Christ, and we are in Ezekiel chapter 41 today. So I hope that you'll open up your Bible and read along with us as we study the Word of God. Chapter 41. Then he brought me into the sanctuary and measured the doorpost, six cubits wide on one side and six cubits wide on the other side, the width of the tabernacle. The width of the entryway was ten cubits, the side of the wall's of the entrance were five cubits on this side and five cubits on the other side, and he measured its length, 40 cubits, and its width, 20 cubits. Also, he went inside and measured the doorpost, two cubits, and the entrance, six cubits high, and the width of the entrance, seven cubits. He measured the length, 20 cubits, and the width, 20 cubits, beyond the sanctuary, and he said to me, this is the most holy place. Next, he measured the wall of the temple, six cubits, the width on each side. The chamber all around the temple was four cubits on every side. The side chambers were in three stories, one above the other, 30 chambers in each story, and they rested on ledges, which were for the chambers all around. And they might be supported, but not fastened to the wall of the temple. As one went up from story to story, the side chambers became wider all around because their supporting ledges in the wall of the temple ascended like steps. Therefore, the width of the structure increased as one went up from the lowest story to the highest by way of the middle one. I also saw an elevation all around the temple, and it was the foundation of the side chambers, a full rod that is six cubits high. The thickness of the outer wall of the chamber, side chambers was five cubits, and also the remaining terrace by the place of the side chambers of the temple. And between it and the wall chambers was a width of 20 cubits all around the temple on every side. The door of the chambers opened on the terrace, one door toward the north and another toward the south, and the width of the terrace was five cubits all around. The building that faced the separating courtyard in its western end was 70 cubits wide. The wall of the building was five cubits thick all around and its length 90 cubits. And he measured the temple 100 cubits long and the separating courtyard and the building and its walls was 100 cubits long. Also, the width of the eastern face of the temple, including the separated courtyard, was 100 cubits. He measured the length of the building and behind it, facing the separating courtyard and with its galleries on one side and on the other side, 100 cubits, as well as the inner temple and the porches of the court. Their doorposts and the beveled window frames and the galleries all around their three stories and the opposite threshold were paneled with wood from the ground to the windows. The windows were covered from the space, the open door, even to the inner room, as well as an as outside and on every wall all around inside and out by measure. And it was made with cherubim and palm trees, a palm tree between the cherub and cherub. Each cherub had two faces so that the face of a man was toward a palm tree on one side and the face of a young lion toward a palm tree on the other side. Thus it was made throughout the temple all around from the floor to the space above the door and all the wall of the sanctuary cherub, cherubim and palm trees were carved. The doorposts of the temple were square, as was the front of the sanctuary. Their appearance was similar. The wood was altar was of wood, three cubits high, and the length, two cubits. Its corners, its length, and its sides were of wood. And he said to me, this is the table that is before the Lord. The temple and the sanctuary had two doors. The doors had two panels apiece, two folding panels, two panels for one door and two panels for the other door. Cherubim and palm trees were carved in the doors of the temple, just as they were carved on the walls. A wooden canopy was on the front of the vestibule outside. There was a beveled window frames and palm trees on one side and on the other and on the sides of the vestibule. Also on the side chambers of the temple and on the canopies. Chapter 42. Then he brought me out to the outer court by the way toward the north and he brought me to the chamber which was opposite the separating courtyard on which was opposite the building toward the north facing the length which was 100 cubits. The width was 50 cubits uh, and was the north door opposite in the inner court of the 20 cubits and opposite the pavement of the outer court was gallery against gallery in three stories. In the front of the chambers toward the inside was a walk 10 cubits wide at a distance of one cubit and their doors faced north. Now the upper chambers were shorter because the galleries took away space from them more than from the lower and middle stories of the building. For they were in three stories and did not have pillars like the pillars of the courts. Therefore, the upper level was shortened more than the lower and middle levels from ground up. And a wall was outside, which was outside, ran parallel to the chambers, the front of the chambers, toward the outer court, 50 cubits, 
uh, and the length of the chambers towards the outer court was 50 cubits, whereas the facing the temple was 100 cubits, and the lower chambers was on uh, the entrance on the east side as one goes into them from the outer court. Also, there were chambers in the thickness of the wall, the court toward the east, opposite the separating courtyard, the opposite building, and there was a wall in front of them also, and their appearance was like chambers, which were toward the north, and they were as long as wide as the others, and all other exits and entrances were according to plan. Corresponding to the doors of the chambers that were facing south, and as one enters them, there was a door in front of the wall, and the way direct in front of the wall toward the east. And then he said to me, the north chambers and south chambers, which are opposite the separating courtyard, are holy chambers, where the priests who approach the Lord shall eat the most holy offerings. And there they shall lay the most holy offerings, the grain offering, the sin offering, and the trespass offering, for the place is holy. And when the priests enter them, they shall not go out of the holy chamber into the outer court, but there they shall leave their garments in the midst they, which they minister, for they are holy. They shall put on other garments, then they may approach that which is for the people. Now when he'd finished measuring the inner temple, he brought me out to the gateway that faces towards the east, and measured it all around. He measured the east side measuring rod and 500 rods by measuring rod all around. He measured the north side 500 rods by measuring rod all around. He measured the south side 500 rods by the measuring rod. And he came around to the west side and measured 500 rods by the measuring rod. He measured it on four sides. It had a wall all around 500 cubits long and 500 cubits wide to separate the holy areas from the common. Chapter 43. Afterward he brought me to the gate, the gate that faces toward the east, and behold, the glory of God of Israel came from the way of the east. His voice was like the sound of many waters, and the earth shone with uh, his glory. It was like the appearance of a vision which I saw, like in the vision which I saw I came to destroy the city. The visions were like the vision which I saw by the river Chabar. And I fell on my face, and the glory of the Lord came into the temple by the way of the gate which faces towards the east. The Spirit lifted me up and brought me into the inner court, and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the temple. Then I heard him speaking to me from the temple, while a man stood beside me. And he said to me, Son of man, this is the place of my throne, and the place of the soles of my feet, where I dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever. No more shall the house of Israel defile my holy name. They nor uh, their kings by their harlotry um, or their carcasses of their kings or their high places. When they set their threshold by my threshold and their doorpost by my doorpost with a wall between them and me, they defile my most holy name by uh, their abominations which they committed. Therefore, I have consumed them in my anger. Now let them put their harlotry and the carcasses of their kings far from me, and I will dwell in their midst forever. Son of man, describe the temple to the house of Israel, that they may be ashamed of their inequity, and let them measure the pattern. And if they are ashamed of all that they've done, make known to them the design of the temple and its arrangement, its exits, its entrances, the entire design and its ordinances, all in its forms and its laws. Write it down in their sight so they may keep it and hold design and all the ordinances and perform them. This is the law of the temple. The whole area surrounding the mountaintop is most holy. Behold, this is the law of the temple. These are the measurements, the altar and cubits. The cubit is one cubit and a hand breadth. The base, one cubit high, one cubit wide, with a rim all around it, uh, its edge of one span. And this is the height of the altar from the base, the ground, lower edge, two cubits. The width of the ledge, one cubit. From the smaller ledge to the larger ledge, four cubits. And the width of the ledge, one cubit. The altar hearth, uh, it's four cubits high. It's with its four horns extending upward from the hearth. The altar hearth is 12 cubits long, 12 wide, square at its four corners, the ledge 14 cubits long and 14 wide on its four sides with a rim a half a cubit around it, its base one cubit all around, and its steps face toward the east. And he said to me, Son of man, thus says the Lord God, these are the ordinances for the altar on the day when it is made, for sacrificing burnt offerings on it, and for sprinkling blood on it. You shall give a young bull for a sin offering to the priests, the Levites, who are the seed of Zadok, who approached me to minister to me, says the Lord God. You shall take some of the blood and put it on the four horns of the altar, one on the four corners of the ledge and the rim around it. Thus you shall cleanse it and make atonement for it. Then you also shall take the bull of the sin offering and burn it on the appointed place of the temple outside 
the sanctuary. And on the second day, you shall offer a kid of the goats without blemish for a sin offering, and they shall cleanse the altar as they cleansed it with the bull. And when you finish cleaning it, you shall offer a young bull without blemish and a ram from the flock without blemish. And when you offer them before the Lord, the priest shall throw salt on them, and they will offer them up as a burnt offering to the Lord. Every day for seven days, you shall prepare a goat for a sin offering. They shall also prepare a young bull and a ram from the flock, both without blemish. Seven days they shall make atonement for the altar and purify it, and so consecrate it. And when these days are over, as it shall be on the eighth day and thereafter, that the priest shall offer your burnt offering and your peace offerings on the altar, and I will accept you, says the Lord God. We're so grateful you joined us today in our time of Bible reading, and hope you'll join us again tomorrow as we keep reading in the book of Ezekiel. Until the next time, have a blessed day. Bye.